Four breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. We are learning much more tonight about the South Carolina father accused of killing his five children. Deputies tonight tell us he stopped in the upstate with the bodies in his car. Evening. Welcome. I'm Michael Cogdell. And I'm Carol Goldsmith. The accused father of those children is back in the state tonight. 32 year old Tim Jones arrived in Lexington County around 4 30 this afternoon. He wore a striped jail uniform and a protective vest. Undercover officers escorted him. We also learned today Jones is an ex convict. In fact, the Associated Press is reporting Jones went on a crime spree in McHenry County, Illinois back in 2001. He was 19 back then. Charges included cocaine possession, stealing a car, burglary, and passing forged checks. And tonight, Timothy Jones faces five counts of murder. And now deputies say he stopped to eat in the upstate after killing his children. WYFF News Force Mike McCormick is live and local in Spartanburg County for us tonight. Mike, where did he stop? Yeah, there's a lot of crazy people out here today. It's scary. It's just scary to me. It's just awful. What is this world coming to? That's the reaction to the latest information from deputies who say Timothy Jones Jr., the Lexington County man accused of killing his children, stopped at this Dunkin' Donuts with the bodies in his vehicle. The business is on Reedville Road near I-26 in Spartanburg County. I, I tell my wife and family all the time, you got to be very careful of your surroundings. You don't know what's around you. That because so many things are going on, it, it's amazing how you could have been right there in this restaurant and, and, and then somebody's dead in the car. Spartanburg County deputies say a receipt found in Jones's vehicle when he was stopped in Mississippi linked him to this Dunkin' Donuts. Deputies say he parked his vehicle by this dumpster to mask the odor of his children's bodies. You never know who you'll be beside. I mean, here I am going to the store. Who knows, I could be walking right beside him and not even know it. According to deputies, Jones was here on Labor Day, two days before the mother of his children reported them missing, and five days before his arrest. I, I just can't imagine how a father could do that. It lets me know that more people got to get closer to God. Now, I don't know if he's ill. Uh, he's just. Deputies say surveillance evil. cameras like the one you're looking at here on the back of the building documented Jones's visit here to this Dunkin' Donuts, but right now that surveillance video is not being released. Mike McCormick, WIFF News 4, live tonight in Spartanburg County. Mike, thank you. An upstate man is accused of sexually assaulting a seven year old girl. WIFF News 4's Mandy Gaither is live and local in Anderson tonight. Mandy, police believe there may be other victims out there? Well, that's right, and police have actually done interviews with multiple children who they say may be victims as well. Jose Ahumada is currently behind bars, charged with criminal sexual conduct with a seven year old. Ahumada is accused of inappropriately touching the girl over her clothing. Police say this happened at a home in Anderson between September of last year and March of this year. Officers are concerned there are other victims because they say the suspect lives in an apartment complex in Anderson called Ashford Point, where they say he'd have access to many children. It's real, real scary. Real, real scary. Makes you wonder what else is going on. Hope Tilly lives in the apartment complex and has a four year old little girl. I watch her really good, so I just be, I guess, more cautious. And, um, but the other parents really need to take heed to it and really watch their children better because I, I see so many. I just, it's sad. So many that run their bicycles, just running around unsupervised. Anderson Lieutenant Mike Aikens says forensic interviews are now underway with multiple children who he says could potentially be victims as well. It's always tough when kids are being victimized um, because, you know, sometimes kids don't know. They trust, you know, adults, so they don't know you know, if what sometimes, okay, this is this right? Is this wrong? So they just don't know sometimes. Ahumada doesn't have a previous arrest record under that name in South Carolina. Police are asking parents of children who may have come into contact with the 63 year old to call them. And the number for the lead investigator in this case is 221 9176. Again, 221 9176. We also reached out to the apartment complex today, but we're told they couldn't comment on the case at this time. 
Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4, live in Anderson. All right, Mandy, thank you. Quick check of the weather now. This is a live look at our Woodruff Road Sky Cam. Uh, fairly nice right now, but big change is coming. And here's the man, Chief Meteorologist John Susserich. John, rain on the way, right? Yeah, in fact, you can see there are, some of us have already seen rain, Michael, uh, as you can see on live Super Doppler 4 HD. Cooling down the temperatures a little bit, especially for you folks in Clemson, just about in the last few minutes or so. You cooled down from the mid 80s uh, to the upper 70s. In fact, you were 90 degrees just a couple of hours ago. Scattered showers, uh, a couple of lightning strikes, but nothing strong, nothing severe. And most of the showers and thunderstorms continue to weaken somewhat, but they're going to become more numerous as we go through the night tonight, especially during the day tomorrow. So where the temperatures are cooler, that's where you've been. You've had recent rainfall. If not, it's hot and dry. 90 in Lawrence, 90 degrees right now. In and Newberry. So, some big changes on the way for us, not just later tonight and tomorrow, but in, through the upcoming weekend. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Now, back to you, Michael. We'll be listening, John. Thank you. Clemson police say a man died in a fight there this morning. The call came in around two this morning from the Golden Woods apartments. An officer soon got there and found 20 year old Cameron Ray Flores had been stabbed. He died later at Oconee Memorial. Police soon arrested 19 year old Michael Rancher in the case. They charged him with murder, and he's being held right now in the Clemson City Jail. Anderson police say an officer trying to make a traffic stop, but the vehicle took off and ended up crashing into a tree, injuring the two women inside. Police say the officer decided it was too dangerous to chase after the car, since it was right around the time children were getting out of school. But he followed in the direction of the car and shortly afterward found the car crashed on Lewis Street. Right now, charges are pending for that driver. Two men are headed to prison after they set up a hoax and attacked a Greenville News delivery driver. Evidence in court showed Michael Fisher and Kevin Brown placed a bicycle in the road last September so that the driver would have to drive over it and stop. The driver did stop and offered the two men a ride. The pair eventually forced the driver out of the car and choked him. They then took off in his car, which they later traded for drugs. Fisher was sentenced to 12 years, Brown 14 years. This is September 11th, the 13th anniversary of the terrorist attacks, and people all over the Carolinas and Georgia took time to remember and to grieve today. Mayor Knox White spoke at an early morning ceremony in Greenville. He thanked the first responders and called this Greenville Heroes Day. Bob Jones University held a chapel service today and presented a piece of steel from the World Trade Center to the student body. And at Boiling Springs Fire Department today, first responders presented a uniform for the fallen firefighters as they gathered around a piece of beam recovered from ground zero. It's important to remember what happened on that fateful day. Uh, you know, when you forget, you're in danger of repeating. So I think it reminds us to be vigilant, but it also reminds us to remember the sacrifice of so many. That piece of steel at Bob Jones University will stay on display and open to the public until 5 o'clock Friday afternoon. The Hyatt Regency held a luncheon today for the second Greenville Heroes Serve and Protect Awards. It is a thank you to first responders for the sacrifices they've made, both locally and on September 11, 2001, around the country. Officer Tim Harrison was there today. You see him here. He was injured in a shooting spree on September 1st at the Greenville Law Enforcement Center. Uh, he received, Officer Harrison received uh, recognition for his bravery, and he received a standing ovation as well. South Carolina House Speaker Bobby Harrell has suspended himself following a nine count indictment. He is accused of misusing his office for personal gain. The First Circuit solicitor says a grand jury in Richland County indicted the speaker on nine charges. They include misconduct in office, using campaign money for personal use, falsely reporting campaign disclosures. The speaker has repeatedly denied doing anything illegal. He is a Republican from Charleston County. Henderson County dispatchers say 15 people were hurt in an accident involving a school bus in Flat Rock. Dispatchers say the wreck happened at 7.30 this morning on Upward Road and Deep Gap Road in Henderson County. Six people were taken to Park Ridge Health. Another nine went to Party Hospital, but dispatchers tell us the injuries are minor. The South Carolina Board of Education plans to take up the issue of junk food in schools, but a local school district says the state dragged its feet on an issue now costing them millions. WIFF News 4 investigates Tim Waller got his hands on emails that may prove their case. Well, Carol, the federal junk food ban known as Smart Snacks allows states to create exemptions that would allow the occasional sale of junk food in schools. Twenty states, in fact, including Georgia, have these exemptions, but not South Carolina. And here is why. A memo we obtained from the State Department of Education sent to local districts this summer says... South Carolina will not be granting any fundraiser exemptions. All food and beverages sold to students on campus during the school day must meet the standards of the smart snack rule. Local school officials fired back asking why and who made the decision. And here was the reply. 
Our decision was not to make a ruling on exempt fundraisers, thus by law defaulting to no exempt fundraisers. Greenville County School Board Chairman Chuck Saylor says he begged state officials to make those exemptions months ago. And it took them months to determine that. It took the State Department a significant amount of time to issue that one memo saying that essentially they would not be granting waivers. Well, just today, the South Carolina Department of Education announced it is sending the issue of whether to grant exemptions to the State Board of Education for a vote. But that won't happen until October 8th, so relief for parents and school fundraisers out there won't come for a while. We're going to keep you posted on that.